Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to Coffee with a Pastor. And let me know if you have your coffee, what you're drinking today. I already had my coffee. I just sort of left it in the other room, so I don't have it with me at the moment. Let's see who's going to sign on here in a minute. <clears throat> Anybody? Hey, Tori. I'm gonna kind of get set up here while we're waiting for some people to hop on. Good morning, how are you doing? Hey, Matt. Good to see you guys on. Hey, Zach. Hey, um, hey, Fran. Naomi. You guys are well today. I um, had a good morning, so that was helpful. <laughs> that always will start your day well. Did a, was able to fit a little workout in, sat outside and watched the, well, the, I didn't really watch the sun come out because the clouds were in front of it, but got to watch it go from dark to light, which is one of my great joys. Hi, mom. My mom is watching. Okay, guys. So as we're waiting for people to hop on, um, uh, it was trending. A lot of people probably saw yesterday that the president extended the nationwide suggestion for social distancing through um, April 30th. So how are people feeling about that? Hey, Tiffany. I know that... Um, a lot of us probably realize that this is the beginning of a long journey for the world um, and for our country. But hearing those words, hey, Forrest, um, can really make things real, right? So I want to bring some positivity into this little moment. Hey, Brittany. And I want to know if what is one random fact? that you have read through all this information we are um, getting every day. I know it's giving a lot of people anxiety to even pay attention. Um, what's something encouraging that you've read? Like for example, I've read that shelters are like all the animals are being adopted <laughs> during this time, um, which is a really cool thing. So obviously we don't want to downplay what's hard, but what are some encouraging random things you guys have, have read? And while we're waiting for those to pop up, I'm hoping you guys have read something encouraging. I feel like the comments always um, are not in real time. I feel like they always take a minute to start showing up. And then I start talking about something else and then I see all the comments pop up after the fact, so. Just a second. Oh, encouragement. Yeah, that's that's a cool fact, right? Does anyone else have anything? Come on, guys, don't let us down. There's got to be some good news out there. Random interesting facts. Drop those below. Matthew says a lot of neighbor connection going on. And I would have to agree with that. I definitely see a lot more neighbors outside walking and kind of wanting to wave, wanting to connect. And you can just sense that people really miss community. Naomi said more family spending time together outside. Yes, and that was the other thing I was gonna say is I don't just see neighbors walking like usual. It's like entire families walking together. Usually it'll be like one person walking the dog or one person on a run, but every time I see people outside now, it's like the whole family, which is cool. And Fran says she's encouraged by the lessening of air pollution. Our earth is really getting a breather right now because of this situation. So yeah, there are some, there's some small scale and large scale things happening that are positive. Forrest said people are finding new ways to build community. Yesterday, his wife participated in a live music session where the artist sung whatever lyrics people entered in the chat. That is so fun. I saw that iHeartRadio is doing a concert, or maybe they did it last night, but maybe go on their Instagram. It featured a bunch of 
pop artists. Um, so it's cool to see artists giving, hey, Brandy, Brandy Brown. It just took a pandemic for her to get on Facebook. <laughs> Brandy said midwives in many states are getting more rights in hospitals due to the no visitor policy. Hoping this remains in place later. And yes, I love, I love us learning things that um, are just always good. And I'm like, can we do this after the fact? Um, Tiffany said patients and healthcare folks are adapting and being flexible with all these changes with televisits and just being patient with each other. Yeah. And I let, I, I hope those things stick around. And another thing, I don't know if this will really work cause I don't work in healthcare, but, um, I've heard that everyone stays in their car until they're called in. And I would rather do that anyway, <laughs> when I go to the doctor, like, can they just call me in? And so I don't have, I don't know. That's just something I think would be cool. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, thanks so much for sharing your encouragement. Please continue to share. A lot of people go through and read the thread later on. So thanks for participating in that. Um, along the lines of encouragement, what I want to do today is read to you um, a poem because I think we can find a lot of joy in poetry. I know that's something we've been doing a lot. Um, but I'm going to be reading from this is my favorite poetry book that I have. I just can't get enough of it. Like everything is marked in here, um, but it's Mary Oliver, New and Selected Poems, Volume 1. And I really had a hard time picking, so you'll probably be hearing more from this as I was going through. But I just want to read to you, um, I'll read two short poems and then we'll do a small meditation to bring us into the week. Um, but basically, now's a good time to just sort of look to the earth, look to nature, look to the outdoors, look to the, to the miracles um, that, of the creator uh, for, for joy and for hope. And so I think these two poems do that. So I want to start with one called The Sun. Okay. The Sun. Have you ever seen anything in your life more wonderful than the way the sun, every evening, relaxed and easy, floats toward the horizon and into the clouds or the hills or the rumpled sea and is gone? And how it slides again out of the blackness every morning on the other side of the world like a red flower streaming upward on its heavenly oils, say on a morning in early summer at its perfect imperial distance. And have you ever felt for anything such wild love? Do you think there is anywhere in any language a word billowing enough that fills you as the sun reaches out, as it warms you, as you stand there empty handed or have you too turned from this world? Or have you too gone crazy for power, for things? Can you guys let me know if you heard that? Um, my, my computer's flashing in this really weird way, so I'd love to see if you actually heard that. Um, I love this poem because it reminds us that everything we need, we do have, even though it's really hard in terms of for the ability to have joy, for the ability to, for, to have the divine presence. And I think that a lot of egos are coming tumbling down right now in our world and our society because power and things are not sustaining us like usual. But if we can look at the miracle of the sun, we can remember that we are dust, but that is a beautiful thing, you know, that we are empty handed in this world. That's what, it, that's the way I like to think of it. Okay, so here's one more poem called Poppies. Also, before I read this, post your favorite flower. I want to know what your favorite flower is. Mine, mine's tulips. I love tulips. But I want to hear what yours are. Okay, Poppies. The poppies send up their orange flares, swaying in the wind. Their congregations are a levitation of bright dust, 
of thin and lacy leaves. There isn't a place in this world that doesn't sooner or later drown in the indigos of darkness. But now, for a while, the roughage shines like a miracle as it floats above everything with its yellow hair. Of course, nothing stops the cold, black curved blade from hooking forward. Of course, loss is the great lesson. But I also say this, that light is an invitation to happiness. And that happiness, when it's done right, is a kind of holiness, palpable and redemptive. Inside the bright fields, touched by their rough and spongy gold, I am washed and washed in the river of earthly delight. And what are you going to do? What can you do about it, deep blue night? Thanks for sharing, guys. I love, I love this poem. What are you going to do about it, night? What are you going to do? We are still going to find our happiness. We're still going to find our joy. We are going to find it in creation, in God's creation. And I think now more than ever is a time for us to make it part of our spiritual practice to notice the small miracles in our life. And so with that, I would like for you to consider one small miracle, or maybe not so small, your hands. Can you consider your hands with me? I want to send you out into this week with a hand meditation. And I've sort of written this based on our um, situation we're in, but it's heavily adapted from this book, Seven Sacred Pauses, which is one of my favorite books ever. I can't get enough of it. I think it's a great book for now, too. Um, and she talks about uh, thinking of your hands as a blessing. And um, she talks about it during tears or the mid-morning hour, which is where we are right now. We're in mid-morning. And one of the things she said is that about the mid-morning hour is that it was in the middle of the morning when the Holy Spirit came upon the waiting disciples with gifts of courage and boldness for birthing a church. And so this is the reason that during this time of day, as the saints everywhere around the world pray the hours, specifically commemorate the joyful coming of the Spirit during the mid-morning hour of tears. So I wanna invite us to recognize what already exists, which is the Spirit of God in this moment with us right now. And I want to um, invite you into this brief time of meditation using your hands because we are entering another work week. We all work doing something and uh, most work requires the use of our hands. And so whether we are using our hands um, in some kind of physical labor or whether we're typing, a lot of us are typing up prayers and columns and lessons and code and emails. Some of us are stocking shelves, ringing people up, serving meals. Some of us are dropping off groceries on doorsteps or serving those in need somehow. And whether we are nursing or doctoring or social working or giving physical therapy, whether we care for humans or animals professionally or at home holding tiny hands and wiping tiny butts, <laughs> it is an honor to use our hands to work for the good of others. And it is a privilege to use our hands to restore and help build up creation. And so I want you, this is a very short little moment of meditation, but I want you to just consider the sacredness of your hands this morning. I want you to hold out your hands right now in gratitude for their many uses. I want you to reach out and touch the things that are near you, 
your body, the things that are lying around you, your computer, maybe you're holding your phone. Pay attention to what your hands are touching. Feel the texture of those things. And I want you to think of some of the tasks that you have done and that you will do throughout this week. What are some of those things? Think about them with intention. How important are your hands for these tasks? I invite you to bring your hands to a comfortable resting position on your lap or you can hold them up in a gesture of praise or prayer. And I want you to hear this prayer now that I'm going to pray. And I want it to be kind of a benediction ascending out into this new week that we are beginning together. Divine Source. From your hands we have come. Anoint our hands this week with tender awareness. Anoint our hands this week with compassionate touch. Anoint our hands this week with sacred energy. In this uncertain season, give success to the work of our hands. Help us remember to reach out and touch the things of life every chance we can. Give us spirit hands. Fill them up with insightful consciousness. May we see with our hands the way those who are blind see. May all that we touch be transformed into an instrument of grace. Holy God, anoint our hands this week. This we pray. I want to remind you that we have prayer requests that we love to take and send out on Mondays. So if you have any, post them in the comments, or if you're on our email list, please use the form. That would be even more helpful. But share with us what's going on, and uh, let us know if you need anything. And we will see you again tomorrow. I believe Fran will be on. Uh, so yeah, stay in touch. See you later.